I've wanted to build a modular synthesizer for quite a while now, so I started working on this one, but it's got no power supply and basically it doesn't do anything at all. If you haven't seen one of these before, it's basically a synthesizer split into its individual components that you can wire together with patch cables. But since it's modular, you don't have to patch it the same way every time. A different patch will make a different sound. But none of the modules can make any sound unless they're also connected to a power supply. So I need to build one of those. On a side note, I severely underestimated the amount of parts you needed to build a synthesizer. If you ask someone who knows about synthesizers, they'll probably recommend you build a linear supply. They're great because they're low noise and are easy to build. They're also inefficient, like really inefficient, usually around 50%, so half of a linear supply's power is wasted as heat. Instead, I'm using a switching adapter claiming 86% efficiency to power two voltage regulator boards that create the required plus 12 minus 12 and 5 volt power rails. This will be higher noise than a linear supply, but realistically not a problem. My main goals for the power supply are to be able to plug anything into it, including full short circuits. I also wanted to show information like voltages and stuff, as well as how long the power supplies run for. I'm thinking maybe an OLED for voltages, but I definitely want an analog meter for current. To measure the voltages, I want to use an Arduino Nano, but anything higher than 5 volts would break it. An easy fix for that is to add a voltage divider in between the Arduino and the voltage we want to measure. Using this formula, we can figure out that the common resistor values 10K and 2K work perfectly to give us a 30 volt input range. Once the Arduino re-multiplies these voltages, we get the exact result we're looking for. However, there is one problem left, and that's the minus 12 volt rail. In order to measure it, we'll have to flip it around using an op amp in this configuration. Testing this out with minus two and a half volts at the voltage divider, it becomes plus two and a half volts, which is safe for the Arduino to measure. Since the Arduino knows all of the voltages, we just need to add some relays to turn off the outputs if there's ever a problem that could damage parts of the synthesizer. And with the prototype out of the way, it's time to actually build this into a synthesizer module. The power supply is finished and I've got it installed in the rack I've made, which is just five plasma cut aluminum pieces that I've bent and bolted together. This design isn't as flexible in terms of module widths as they have to be a multiple of five centimeters, but I think the consistency looks nice. You'll probably notice that this thing is quite large and it's the same size as the Cosmo format by Look Mum No Computer, but it doesn't use the Eurorack power connectors. Instead, I'm using JSTs, mostly because I already had them. I chose this format over Eurorack for a number of reasons. Mostly the bigger size makes it more DIY friendly, and also I just like the big connectors. The power supply is also plasma cut aluminum, and up until now I've been putting Dymo labels on these modules, but I've also been experimenting with painting them. Let me know which one you like better. Quite a few things changed while I was building this power supply, the most important ones being the addition of two big capacitors that help provide power during current spikes, as well as the addition of TVS diodes on all the power rails to get rid of any weird voltage spikes that could damage components. There's also a thermometer, but it turns out the voltage regulators don't really get hot enough for it to do anything. Maybe at full load it'll go up a couple degrees. I mounted the voltage dividers and the op amp to a prototyping board, and when I was building that board I realized I'd run out of pins on the Arduino, so what I ended up doing was using the same pins for the relays as the green LEDs on the front. Since the relays are active low, I had to invert the signal, so I just used some transistors and put them underneath the Arduino socket. This thing's got three power connectors, two on the front and one on the back. You can plug power into any of them and use the available ones as outputs in case you want to plug in another synthesizer or really anything you want off the same AC adapter. There's also two power buttons, one for turning it on and one for turning it off. That's because I needed the Arduino to be what actually shuts down the supply, since it's got the hour counter and settings and stuff it needs to save into the EEPROM before it shuts down. But I also wanted the supply to be completely disconnected from the AC adapter when it's turned off. 
The way that works is when you press the on button, it bypasses the relay inside that powers up the voltage regulators and the Arduino. The first thing the Arduino does once it powers on is send power out to that relay to keep it running when you let go of the button. Once it's running, it'll go through a couple of checks to make sure all the voltages and stuff look right, and if they do, it'll turn on the three output relays that power up the rest of the synthesizer. If things don't look right, it won't turn on the outputs, and it will blink one of the LEDs red to indicate where the problem is. Each LED corresponds to a different voltage rail. When you want to turn it off, you just press the off button, and it will save any important data to the EEPROM and then shut itself down. The first time you turn this thing on, the voltages it measures probably won't be very accurate. And that's just down to things like resistor tolerances and the reference voltage not being quite exact. To calibrate it, you just have to press the rotary encoder and then turn it until the value it displays matches what you measure with the multimeter. Once it's calibrated, it should be fairly accurate. Measuring 14.45 volts, the display showed 14.43, and at the high end, it showed 29.8 volts as 29.3. The power supply also has an output connector in case you want to test something outside of the synthesizer rack, as well as a USB port in case you want to change anything in the firmware. I've also got three other modules. I won't talk too much about these ones since they're not my own design. The first one is a VCO or voltage controlled oscillator, and this one makes a waveform where the frequency depends on its CV input. Every one volt you send to this connector will raise the frequency by one octave. This specific one makes a triangle wave, a sawtooth wave, and a square wave. The second module is a VCA or voltage controlled amplifier, and this one changes the volume of whatever you send through it based on its CV input. More CV signal makes a louder sound, less CV signal makes a quieter sound. I put RGB LEDs on this one to tell you where the CV signal is coming from, and if you have multiple CV sources, it'll mix between colors, and I think it looks pretty cool. The third one is a voltage-controlled low-pass filter that'll cut out any frequencies above a certain threshold that you can set with CV. It can also add resonance, which is basically an overshoot at that cutoff frequency. Also on this filter module, at the bottom there's an envelope generator, a fairly basic one that checks if its input is on or not, and if it is, it'll start building up a signal. The time that that takes depends on the first knob, and once the input goes off, it'll start to let that signal go, and the time that that takes depends on the second knob. To hear how these sound together, I'm going to get the keyboard. This keyboard is far from done. I'm planning to turn it into kind of a key step pro type sequencer, but for now it's just got two outputs on it, a gate output and a CV output. The gate output is on as long as any of the keys are pressed down, and the CV output changes its voltage based on which key you're pressing. Since this keyboard spans four octaves, the lowest key is zero volts and the highest key is four volts. For a fairly basic patch, I've got the gate output plugged into the trigger in on my envelope generator, and the CV output plugged into the CV in on my VCO. I'll also plug the output of the envelope generator into the CV in on my VCA, and the triangle output of my VCO into the in on my filter, the out of my filter into the VCA in, and the out of the VCA into the computer. And that sounds like this. Pretty basic, but there's a ton of stuff we can do to it. First, I'll turn up the release on the envelope generator. Then I'll turn down the filter and add some resonance. These sounds are just coming out of these three modules. Even with just these three, there's a ton more possibilities of ways I could connect these together, but there's also a ton of empty rack space to fill up with more modules. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I would have played songs on the keyboard, but I don't know how to play one yet. But I do have Rick Astley loaded on this Arduino.